Yeah, gotta aim for the top like Hold up, yeah I can never doubt myself, I know better All of you critics be acting like you know better Blowing the smoke, but I know when the dust settles So I'm in my element, it's evident that this level to the game All of those dark nights I got Today's dish is gonna be another French dish, right? The whole month was gonna be a thing of French Excuse my uh, absence last two weeks I was sick, a little bit out of the weather, so it's okay I'm better now, I'm back and I'm better so yes, French dish, and it is called coco van. Coco van is a, how can I, how do you say, uh, a dish that is a stew dish, pretty much. Uh, kind of like the beef bourguignon dish I did two episodes ago. If you haven't seen that, check it out in the description down here. I'll put it in there, check that out, watch that. And uh, yeah, instead of beef, you just use chicken, and there are certain other, other, and other, other ingredients, like cognac, uh, of course, red wine, and I do have celery now, so do not judge me. Don't come for me in the comments talking about, it's not a French dish if you didn't use a mirepoix. I'm using the correct mirepoix. I stopped being lazy. So enough talking, let's get to it. All right, so we're gonna do our rice. I have jasmine rice. Of course, every good rice measurement knows it's one to one and a half. So one cup of rice to one and a half cups of water, right? So you're gonna make sure it's like all the way one cup. So you wanna wash your rice until your water kind of turns clear. Usually it has all that starch in it, but at this point it's gonna turn clear to let you know you are good to go. So at this point I'm going to debone the chicken thighs, right? I got bone in chicken thighs. I love uh, chicken thighs more than, more than chicken breasts. Some breasts are a little bit too dry for me. I prefer my thighs. So uh, no little tips to really deboning, just bake, basically make sure you cut along the line, along the edge of the bone, right? Until you can see it. It's gonna take a while. Depending on what type of knife you have too down until you can see it'll open up a little bit right see that you just keep cutting around it until you get a nice little depending on your knife you should use a deboning knife but you don't have to try to slide your knife under nice little cut and from there down Boned. Look at that. Look at that. Boom. So right now I'm washing the chicken off. Just making sure I get everything out. Everything, you know. Anything that was on there that didn't need to be on there. Use cold water, room temperature water. Preferably nothing hot because you don't want to try to cook it. Now your chicken's washed. You're gonna wanna pat it dry. Make sure it's dry because you wanna season it too. So make sure all that seasoning sticks. Get in that little paper towel. Dab it on top. You know, flip it over. Same thing. She's naked. She's exposed. So now we got this here. We're gonna season it with some nice little bit of salt. All right, all sides, all right? Don't just season one side. No. Season with all sides, don't just use one side. You know, salt, oh God. All right. chicken chicken season I got right and basically usually you just use salt and pepper on the chicken for this dish but for me I, I kind of want to enhance that flavor from the chicken you know because since that is the basically the main protein that's in the dish you have some other stuff like carrots and celery and some onions and mushrooms but still I just want to you know when you bite into that protein I do want you to throw something but majority of the flavor is coming from the stew as well so Season those like so. Get it all nice in there and nice like 
And it may look like a little, but trust me, this is gonna go a long way. Usually you can use pancetta in this, but for this I'm just using regular smoked bacon. Pancetta is a little bit thicker and it has a lot more smokiness, a lot more flavor in it. I'm gonna just kick cut this in a little like lardones as they call it, right? Well, that's our rice timer. Definitely take your rice off. Definitely take your rice off. Okay, so as you see, I got everything already pre-cut out. Mies dal, mies and plow, just own stack, right? So I got my celery, I got my carrots, I got my onions, AKA the mirepoix, I got my bacon, I got my chicken stock, I have my fresh thyme here, I have my red wine, Pinot Noir, and I also have my cognac. Now this cognac's a little bit different. It is a made with cognac and orange liqueur, so it has a little bit of an orange flavor to it. So let's see how that turns out in this dish. But the reason you wanna use the cognac is because it's gonna cook with that chicken and it's gonna cook with that bacon as well to get the fond off the bottom of the pot. It's gonna bring you some crazy flavor. So just let's just do it, all right? Let's just, let me show you how to do it. All right, so look, we got our little Dutch oven here, AKA my ancient pot. We are gonna do put a little bit of olive oil in here, just a little bit. You should use some good olive oil though, because it brings out a lot more flavors. Honestly, there's 10,000 olive oils, olive oils, just choose them, right? So you don't want to burn your bacon or cook it so fast, you want to render it and get that golden brown flavor, the golden brown color. Sorry. So once it's a little hot, doing this thing, whatever, and don't forget, bacon makes its own fat, so you don't got to go crazy with the oil, right? You got a little more time. Once so that gets to some heat. All right, so first, bacon. Get in, get, 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 get in. All right. Remember, you don't want to cook it all the way. You want it just to render the fat. Now, all this stuff at the bottom, that's good. Because that is the fat basically going from, let's render it out from the bacon. And then we're going to use this to cook our other stuff in too. It's gonna take all the flavor from that. That's the cool part. The chicken in here. I love the skin on because I love that, that that texture. We're gonna do skin side down first. Be careful not to pop yourself. We're gonna do it in batches. Three. We're gonna go three by two. Yeah. We don't want to cook it all the way. We just want it to get a nice browning. That's all we want to do. So like that, but like a little bit more. Cool part is that all that oil in there, so from the bacon to the chicken, all that the juice is releasing is gonna be a lot more flavor when we add our, our mirepoix inside. It's gonna be amazing. And we're not even done with that chicken yet, so it's just nice brown, but it's gonna finish the rest of the way through when it's in the stew. All right, now those chickens are looking beautiful. I got a mirepoix, carrots, celery, onion. We're gonna add all this in here with this flavor and let's get it cracking. Let's turn this down a little bit. Just look, we want on the burn. We'll turn it down just a, just a tad. In the words of one of my chefs, just a tad. All right, let's go. Celery, carrots. I'm gonna get a little bit of the onion. All right. And of course, a little bit of salt, All right? About a teaspoon of salt. And also a teaspoon of pepper. Look at that, all right? Of course, you gotta stir it up. Don't let it cook all on one side now. Now all that flavor is at the bottom and those juices, you're gonna cook in this mirepoix. Oh my God, look at that. Look at those colors. So vibrant, so pretty. That's like, it should make you wanna cook because it's like the aromatics, the color. You're basically an artist, you know? Painting your own picture. The plate is your canvas, do what you like. Now the reason people use mirepoix, if you don't know what mirepoix it is, it is a blend of three things, carrots, celery, and onions. That's the basic French mirepoix right there. And a lot of French dishes, if you look them up, they'll start with that base and they'll build on that. Uh, there's also another holy trinity, uh, New Orleans style mirepoix, which is, if I'm not mistaken, it's uh, onions, bell peppers, and then garlic. Um, if I'm not mistaken, but that's in uh, Creole cuisine, so check that out too. But basically these base vegetables are amazing to use in any beginner dish because it brings out a lot more flavor and you can build upon that. You know, and who don't like onions? If you don't like celery, this may be a good way for you to, you know, try them out. Ooh, you can smell that now, baby. 
So once this does go to a, a simmer, once it comes to a simmer, you're gonna put a lid on top, make sure it fits on there nice and tightly, and you're gonna put it in the oven for about 30 to 40, 30 to 40 minutes. Cause it's gonna cook, the flavors are gonna get crazy, that chicken's gonna get nice and tendy, and it's gonna be fire. All right. Oh God. Oh damn. Oh, I'm 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 excited. I'm excited. I'm just like a little schoolgirl. I'm so excited. All right, get off my face. So it's simmering right now, which is great. It's amazing. Now you need to set your oven to 250 degrees. All right. It's gonna sit. We're gonna get a lid. All right. Place this bad boy on top. All right. And we're gonna set it in the oven. Where's my little mitts? We're gonna set it in the oven for 30 to 40 minutes, all right? All right, 30 to 40 minutes. You know what we can do by then while, while, while we wait? We can. So here I'm gonna tie some thyme sprigs, fresh thyme sprigs, and I also had the chance to cut up some garlic, right? So with this, I'm going to saute these mushrooms inside of that. But I'm gonna actually give this uh, thyme a little bit more mint, so I want a little bit finer. Right. So after I can put all these sprigs off, it'll be amazing. Quick, uh, gonna finish cutting the rest of these little mushrooms real quick. Get out of here, paper towel. Get out of here. I'm gonna saute these, Johns. So I got my thyme, my garlic, and I have my mushrooms, right? So I'm gonna get my little pan over here. Oh, that's the time for our stuff. Get my pan over here, right? Get that going. Add a little bit of oil, get in there, get in there. All right, a little bit of oil in there. Make sure that gets turned around, flipped, flossed. Applesauce, all that, all right? It's gonna get heated up real nice, then we're gonna add it all together. Our mushrooms, our garlic, and our rosemary. And we're gonna add it to our stew because that's gonna bring out a little bit more flavor in the stew. And you know mushrooms carry a lot of flavor, so adding the garlic and the thyme to that, oh man, it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be an explosion of flavor. All of our shrooms. We're gonna add our rosemary, add our garlic. I mean, I'm sorry, our thyme and our garlic. I keep saying rosemary, probably my second time saying that. And of course, add your S&P on me, baby, you dig? All right, salt, pepper, garlic. I would use butter, but it's no need because it's gonna go inside of our already going coco van, all right? So if you want, you can always add a little bit more oil because you kind of want the garlic and the thyme to stick to it which is fine, but it's already doing that on its own, All right? Now, you're gonna get a tablespoon of butter, right? Put it in your little, little thing thing, as well as a tablespoon and a half of flour, right? Oh, shit, sorry. My eye! There you go and a tablespoon and a half. You're gonna mix that in with your butter, right? So what this is gonna do, this is kinda going to make like a bit of a slurry to thicken it, all right? Mix that together in there. I'm gonna mix the butter and your flour in there together, all right? You can either do that or you can even add cornstarch, make a slurry like that. Either way, it's up to you. But these are nice the way I want them. Simple, quick. Turn those off. And now I'm gonna take out my coco van. You smell that? Ooh. It smells delicious. Bring it on top, All right? Now we're gonna do I just made a little cornstarch slurry added in there, but I guess butter and flour does something. I don't know. To be honest with you, I, I this is new for me, so. The 
sense of that. Beautiful. Now, we're gonna add in our butter and flour mixture, right? We're gonna just stir that in. I have a whisk, we'll just whisk that in nicely. All right, and our mushrooms, we're gonna add those in as well. Okay. And we want all this, all that, we need all that. You get your little rubber spatula, whatever you got. Get all that in there, right? I'm gonna put it on low. Right. Get all that in there. Move stuff around. Whatever you gotta do. Cook it on low. Until that evaporates. Yeah, cook it on low heat for about like five to 10 minutes. Mm. Bring it to a simmer. Let it cook for another 10. Good to go. Matter of fact, let's give that a taste one time. Mm, that's it. I like that. I like that. It, it, it's, it's not like, oh my God, but it's like, wow, it's very elegant. It's very elegant. I'm gonna taste the wine. It's very pretty. The color's nice. Like you taste everything in there. The wine, of course, the cognac, all that. It's so like, it's really good. I have none more to say because it's really good. Chicken's cooked thoroughly all the way through. Now this is the best part. You can play this over anything. Rice, noodles, mashed potatoes, but for this case, I think I'm gonna do rice. Why not, right?